and basically ready to set the world on fire. Um, I've been in business for a while. I was very successful. I was, I was doing about $40 million in personal production. I had uh, just lost, launched our uh, real estate brokerage, uh, and I had also launched a mortgage company, um, completed one commercial project, and was beginning a second commercial project. Uh, we had, uh, had already outgrown our first um, our building. We bought the mayor's house, which was about 12,000 square foot. We converted that to our professional real estate office, uh, which gave us about 41 private offices and five conference rooms. Um, uh, we grew, we launched in 2002 with about 28 agents. Uh, we quickly grew uh, to over 360 agents in, in about 20 months, um, which blew past our 5, 10, and 15 year visions for growth. Uh, therefore, we needed to embark on an additional uh, office site, so we, we began uh, breaking ground <clears throat> on a 100,000 square foot office building. Um, Needless to say, I quickly spun out of control, and uh, Todd Screaming, one of the uh, one of the core owners, told me, you know, this is too much. You you got to stop. And unfortunately, the horses were already out of the gate. Uh, so I, it took me a better part of four or five years just to kind of get my arms back around it um, and keep moving forward. So what I now know um, is it's not necessarily what we learn, but it's what that we do on a daily basis. Um, and even as disciplined as I am, I just do a whole lot better when somebody else is watching. Um, I love the CORE's motto of profitability via accountability. That's, that's really become my true reality. Um, since returning to the CORE after graduating in 04, I came back in 09, kind of with my tail between my legs trying to figure out um, what the horizon looked. Uh, you know, the stock market had bust. Uh, the housing market had bust and the view from my window wasn't looking very good, so I reached out to those who, who were continuing to have a good success uh, with the Corps and, um, you know, got re-entrenched, uh, got back in coaching, um, got my operations right-sized. Um, I, I actually began doing less volume um, but was actually able to make more money by running my business properly. Um, my journey with the core has allowed me to increase my net worth from 300,000 to over 3 million, to lead a personal production team to over 30 million in annual sales, all while working less than 25 hours on my personal production team. Um, the core uh, ha has taught me how to lead my companies better, how to manage people better, how to network success, um, and allow me to never miss a family uh, breakfast, dinner, extracurricular event. Um, I'm at ball practice, I'm coaching t-ball, I'm coaching flag football, uh, I'm coaching soccer, um, and I have a 25-year uh, very successful uh, marriage with three beautiful children. Um, I originally joined the core, even though my real estate practice was doing well, just to learn the mortgage side of the business. And real, what I quickly realized is they are so much more. Um, I, I, I have learned to be a, a better Christian, a better father, a better team leader, a better businessman. Um, it, it's just, it, it, is the, it is the full package. Um, and, I, and I believe that we should have it all. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm frustrated with our industry that, uh, unfortunately, the day that we stop selling is the day our income stops. Our business is fraught with divorce, working too many hours. Um, I, I truly believe that we can only be as good to our clients as we can be to ourselves, so we have to have balance. And what I quickly found in the business is nobody taught that. They quickly teach every broker or manager that I knew taught grow, grow, grow. Make more sales and get on to the next one. Make more sales and get on to the next one. But nobody taught us balance. Um, so I, I became frustrated very early on. Um, I've been a student of my craft since day one. I attended my first National Association of Realtors convention in 1993, the first year I was in the business. I've since attended 12 more. I've been a speaker and a panelist for several other real estate organizations, but none that I'm aware of um, actually require from the owners to the coaches to be active, high-producing practitioners in the business. I'm on the street just like you guys. I'm competing on listing presentations. I'm appealing appraisals when these knuckleheads get it wrong, um, and I'm battling short sales. 
So I know exactly what you're living through, and that's why the, the systems that we put together at the core um, can help grease sleds and make it a little bit easier for all of us. Um, that's why I believe the information here is really second to none. Um, a little bit about um, a realtor flow chart um, and a little bit about um, why I think the model uh, here is, is a perfect balance uh, launching into the business. Um, how, how, do, how are we building a perfect team? You know, I, I think Theodore Roosevelt said it best when he says the best executive is one who has enough sense to pick good people to do what he wants done and the self-restraint to keep from meddling with them while they do it. Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Poor Dad, says the only difference between a rich person and a poor person is what they do with their time. Um, I have modeled my practices after the e-myth of Michael Gerber and uh, Jim Collins, good to great, uh, and I think it's all about having not only the right people on the bus, but making sure they're sitting in the right seats. Um, so where do we find these people? Who are these people? Um, many of you have heard of DISC profiles, personality assessments, Myers-Briggs, there's a number of them out there. Um, I'm a longtime fan of um, personal profiles. I believe it's a great way to um, put the right person in the right seat of the bus. Um, a, a team leader, uh, you know, the main realtor is typically a high D, uh, a, a dominant personality, um, kind of short bullet points, you know, get, get down to it, you know, give it to me in, a, in an at a glance. Um, they don't have a lot of time for fluff. They don't have a lot of time for banter. Um, they can tend to be a little short and curt at times, so you need to watch that as you transition from an individual practitioner to a team leader. Um, they are typically high in I, which is the, the personality traits, the salesy, uh, fun-loving person. Um, you know, they're able to match and mirror. They're, they're, you know, your best salespeople are, are, are high I's. So uh, a team owner or a real estate practitioner is typically a high D and a high I. Um, our RP2s, and we're going to get into further description of what these are, our RP2s are what we call our Realtor Partner 2, be it a buyer specialist or a listing specialist. Um, they are typically high eyes. Um, they are the life of the party. Uh, again, great people to match and mirror with, to network with. Um, they're, they're very salesy. Um, they're usually um, high in individualistic traits, um, meaning that they're very competitive. Those tend to be very good RP2s. A high S is, a, is another quality that helps with an RP2 because they're stable and compliant. Um, they adhere to procedures and protocols. They like being on the team. They like a little more certainty uh, than just a free range of 100% uh, you know, business, 100% commissions. Um, our RP1s, our realtor partner ones, are our transaction managers, our concierges, our executive assistants. Um, they tend to be, they really need to be a high S. Um, they like policies and procedures. Um, they like the roles, the responsibilities. They are very good at what they do uh, when you outline how it needs to be done, procedures, protocols, and things like that. So uh, we always want to have an RP1 as a, as a high S. And as your business progresses and you incorporate a dialer into the mix, um, and we'll talk more specifics about what a dialer actually does. As you can see, they're, they're in training. They're, they're basically a dialer or an intern. Uh, they're going to evolve to a uh, salesperson. So they, again, need to be a high eye, um, uh, you know, a very social person, be able to network with people. Um, in order to incorporate these assessments, uh, Tony Robbins um, has a free assessment that you can go to and actually have people do them. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this, I highly recommend a personal assessment being done uh, by an assessment firm. I've used Manesh Bakshi for years. Um, he's probably done over 50 assessments for, for several different corporations that I'm involved with, um, and he can literally help you interpret um, a person's assessment. Um, Manesh's uh, website is StopHiringLosers.com. Again, Stop Hiring Losers. You can download a free ebook. Uh, learn a little bit more about that, but he'll actually handle a personal assessment for you if you need that. So that's the type of person we're looking for. Where do we find them? Um, these type of uh, our team members, 
are in our database. They're in our sphere of influence. Um, they are real estate practitioners that are struggling in the business. Uh, in my marketplace, the failure rate's 98.6% and has been for the better part of the 20 years that I've been here. Less than 2% of real estate practitioners live to see their, their two-year license renewal. And over 50% of most associations do zero transactions a year. So there are a lot of highly qualified people out there that are just uh, lacking the systems and structure to succeed. Um, absent of those two uh, marketplaces, uh, you can certainly go to Craigslist for free. If you're strategic and don't want to mess with that, Monster.com will allow you to, to actually pull out some very highly qualified people. Um, you know, Craigslist, you get what you pay for. It's a free service. You tend to what you provide. Monster.com, these people are paying to upload resumes. They tend to be a higher quality person. Um, so again, you can, you can go out there. Um, my team came from my network. Um, Richie Frank, my, my RP2 buyer specialist sales manager, has been with me 18 years. Tracy started it off with me as a client. She was one of the first piece my, people I ever sold a home to. Uh, she um, was a retail sales manager for, uh, for years. Uh, she got into real estate a couple years after being transferred out here from California. After a couple years of struggling, she asked if I was looking to expand the team, and at that point I was. So uh, Tracy was a client, became a realtor, uh, so she came out of both of my categories. Uh, Brenda Porter is my RP2 seller specialist. Brenda and I have been together about eight years. Uh, she did come out of an ad. Um, Kim Lund, my transaction manager, she's my RP1 transaction manager. Kim's been with me about 10 years. She, too, came to me as a past client. She was in my geographic farm. I sold her a house, um, and uh, she um, we, we, we advertised through our database first. So uh, that's where they came from. Um, when do we hire? Um, we hire an RP1, a personal assistant, um, somebody to help you. If you're averaging two and a half transactions a month, you have to have a personal assistant. If you don't have an assistant, you are your assistant. Um, and we talked another call about the, about the value of leverage and things like that. But when you bring in a personal assistant, you will almost quickly see your volume double. Um, so when you're averaging three and a half sales per month, then you want to be bringing on an RP2, which is an additional sales associate, to help you out there on the street. Um, so that's kind of the who, what, where, and when. Now we're going to get more into specifics of the what and the how. Um, our realtor role, our realtor responsibility, um, you know, our core model is what you see on the screen. I'm going to share it with you a little bit deeper breakdown of my particular team responsibilities. As a team leader, my responsibility is to generate 100 leads per month for the team. We do that through the core system of mail, call, visit, and that's handled via five theme days. On Mondays, I'm responsible to nurturing to my top 25. That's, a, that's my upper echelon of my database that I have an active relationship with, that they're actually referring me uh, at least one person per quarter. Um, I'm responsible to call eight of my top 25 every Monday. I need to do a minimum of six face-to-face -face visits uh, a year with them. Um, we have a birthday program for our top 25 where they get a birthday card, they get a personal cupcake delivery on their birthday. Um, we're more of a bedroom community, about 45 miles northwest of Washington, D.C., so a lot of people commute in those instances. Um, we'll we'll, we'll ship, um, ship their birthday present to their office be it a, a personalized book, cigars, uh, golf balls, um, you know, whatever's appropriate. It doesn't need to be expensive. It just needs to be the thought that, hey, I saw this and I was thinking of you. We host a monthly happy hour for our, our top 25 club, and then we do an annual event a little bit higher end than our normal database, and, uh, you know, we're, we're currently doing a wine tasting for them. Tuesdays is my current client day, my theme day for current clients. We call every one of our clients in process, either active listings or current under contract, um, every Tuesday. Uh, we, I will update either myself or an RP2. We do rotations between our, our lists because we, we have so many listings and it really becomes uh, impossible to get that done in one day. So we'll do a rotation between me and my RP2. Uh, we'll do an updated market analysis, bringing her up to speed with what's happening in the marketplace. Uh, we'll go over our CSS showings report, showing them, you know, who said what about the property, what the feedback was, and help them make informed decisions. 
make sure we take great care of and look for referrals. Um, Wednesdays is our database, is my database day. I call a letter of the week. Um, it, it's a system at the core. You can touch your entire database twice per year. Um, there's 26 letters in the alphabet, 52 weeks in a year. If you call a letter a week, you will have touched your entire database twice in a year. Um, now, it's not literally a letter per week. I mean, A's make up less than 2% of my database, or B's and C's make up almost 20% of my database. So it takes several weeks to get through my B's and C's, but it's a good system to actually randomly rotate through our database. They receive a monthly mailer, a letter from the heart, and evidence of success. Uh, and then we do a couple geographic farms. They also re uh, receive electronic mail per month. We do an annual event um, at the ball game. Uh, we do an, um, um, a client event um, each year for our current clients. Uh, so that's our database day. Uh, Thursdays is our business people, where we call 10 people a week. Uh, we meet two per month, um, and we're constantly growing our, our business partners as we do. Um, we ask the business partners if we're doing a lunch um, to, to bring a guest, bring another co-worker so that we can expand our network and add them to our database. We include them in our birthday program as well. Uh, we invite them uh, to monthly happy hours, uh, and we refer them for the laws of reciprocation. Uh, Friday is our builder day, where we call, um, call on 10 builders a week. Uh, I do two site visits uh, a week where we rotate through different builders in the community. We're members of our local builder association, and we attend their monthly meetings uh, and any type of lunch and learns that we can do, sharing what's happening in the real estate community and the marketplace. Uh, is a great lead. So that's all under my top responsibility of just generating 100 leads per month. My second responsibility is to lead and manage the team. We do that through detailed job contracts. We have daily checklists. We have automated systems in our, in our, our client relationship management tools. We do a daily team meeting. We do quarterly retreats and an annual off-site meeting. Uh, and that's how we lead and manage our team. We manage, our, our third responsibility as a team leader uh, is to manage the money, and we do that via the core forms. We um, use a pay log, which is what we call a uh, sales pipeline. We do a monthly corporate profit and loss so that we can manage our money and review our, um, our return on investment. Uh, as far as that's concerned, uh, and then all that money flows through to our personal budget. Um, so those are our top three responsibilities. Our top three measurements, uh, as far as that's concerned, to make sure our checks and balance are in place, is that we do a culture test, and that we're required to score at least an eight or higher in the eyes of our team. Are we operating in integrity? Are we leading the way we should be? Uh, our second measurement is that we are closing seven transactions per month, and that we're netting 63000 uh, and income per month so that we can keep the doors open. Um, feel free to blow past any goals that you set, but we're focusing on uh, fewer transactions at higher dollar price points um, as far as that's concerned. So those are our core responsibilities and measurements as a realtor. A realtor partner one, um, depending upon the size of your team, as you grow, this position will expand. Um, they're the ones who set us up for success. As we went through a long laundry list of responsibilities, primarily prospecting, and I think that's the largest distinction and what separates us from the competition, is that we are doing, uh, we're, we're out there just working the prospecting muscle much more than our competition. Uh, as you can see, very little is what we actually do as a real estate practitioner, meaning um, the actual market analysis, listing the property and things like that. We got a prospect prospect and prospect. So our realtor partner ones are what set us up for success as far as that's concerned. Uh, this is an average, um, a, a varying scale from 10 to $20 per hour. Uh, they manage all of our, our checklists. I have a, um, I have a part-time RP1, what we call concierge. She's actually the teen mom. She's my mother. Uh, she works three days a week. She answers all the phone calls live. She maintains all the pre-listing and listing contract packs so that the RP2 transaction manager uh, or the RP2 agent can grab a file and keep on running. 
Uh, she assists the RP2s with any any other tasks they need. The measurement uh, for the RP1 concierge is that she answers all phone calls within two rings. That she is that our goal is to get one current client referral per settlement, and that we are receiving raving fan client surveys. Um, I have a, an RP1 executive assistant who helps me manage my other companies um, and, my, and my other, if you will, distractions, the things that pull me actually outside of my practice. Um, but for today's purposes, we're talking about how to run a, a, a proper real estate team. Um, and our RP1 transaction manager is actually cha challenged with, with the largest task of that. Her top three responsibilities are managing the team leader's schedule. She needs to uh, have a daily printed schedule and a daily communication log on my desk by 9 a.m. every morning. She's responsible to register for all calls, seminars, and webinars. She uh, downloads the core monthly podcast into iTunes so that when I sync up my iPad, I have all the latest um, classes taught by the other core coaches and the owners. She's scheduled uh, responsible to schedule three channel accounts slash database appointments from Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. She's also scheduled, uh, responsible to schedule one channel or database lunch, coffee, or break bread Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. Uh, and she prints a daily MLS report for expireds. Uh, some agents we go after behind, some agents we don't. Our team production. If your RP2 is making a price adjustment out there, if you're speaking to your client, you want to be up to speed with what's going on in your, your, your inventory. Uh, and then any geographic arms, the geographic farms that we compete in. So my ultimate goal as a team leader is to spend a minimum of four and a half hours a day in what we call green time, prospecting. So that consists of three face-to-face -face meetings and some form of a break bread. A break bread might be a coffee. It might be a lunch meeting, it might be a, an actual dinner meeting, or just an, an after-hours drink. That could be part of your happy hour program. But if you can focus four and a half hours in green time, prospecting a day, then, then you're going to see an enormous improvement in your results. Um, another part of uh, her responsibilities is to confirm all appointments the day before. Um, why? Time is money. I'm, I'm a big believer in Murphy's Law, unfortunately. Uh, and it's usually the appointment that is all the way across time or across town at rush hour. You know, you've got one appointment that's 40, 45 minutes away through rush hour. You get all the way across town and find out that they, they weren't there, they canceled, uh, they listed with somebody else, whatever the case might be. Now you've not only lost an hour getting out there, the prep time, now you've got to come all the way back across town. I mean, depending upon your hourly wage, that could be easily $1,000, $2,000. So we, we make sure that we confirm all appointments the day before. All appointments are loaded in GPS. I use AT&T Navigator, so you can um, hit history or most recent appointments. Getting lost can be as important or as expensive as a canceled appointment or missing that. We want to answer the phone call by the second ring. We want to avoid the perception of being too busy. Human nature comes into play by any clients that feel that we're too busy. They don't want to necessarily refer us because it's going to take away from time that we should be devoting to them. Uh, they might find the perfect house for them. So we need to have the perception that we have the capacity and uh, the ability to not only serve people they refer to us, but it will actually help them. Um, so answer all calls within the second ring. Uh, they need to record our real-time voicemail greetings every day. They need to handle, most importantly, our calls and our emails. Um, email has got to be one of the most liberating freedoms that we can give ourselves. Um, I, I can't tell you how many people uh, are just, just buried in it. They, if, they, if, they, if, if, if the average real estate practitioner solely transitioned the amount of time and energy they put into email to prospecting, they would double their business. Um, I'm not saying for a second that we're not busy, um, but I think the distinction at the core is being productive. We can be busy 24 hours a day. There is stuff that I could just have my hands in literally 24 hours a day, um, but we want to focus on our highest dollar per hour task. 
Um, so that is that is the one of the biggest responsibilities of the transaction manager is to manage the team leader schedule. Of course, second key responsibility is managing the database, the top 25 or top 50 programs in a birthday program. He's responsible for getting the, the monthly uh, mailers out, the evidence of success, the letter from the heart. She can delegate some of that downward. Um, the letter from the heart can be delegated to different team members uh, to make sure it gets written, it's formatted, it's, uh, it gets printed and out to the bulk mail house. Um, the evidence of success uh, at our weekly team meetings will discuss a good topic um, that is relevant right now. Uh, you know, as, as different tax incentive programs come out, different short sale incentives come out. Um, you know, we just settled the second largest class action lawsuit in, in U.S. history with the robo signing. There's a lot of real time information out there, so it's a perfect time to discuss, you know, how some of the banks now are paying up to $30,000. Um, and relocation assistance for a seller to participate in a uh, short sale. So there's some really relevant pieces. Our RP2s are responsible to pull the comps for the geographic farms that we work in. Um, they, um, they are responsible to print and get this information to the bulk mail. Bulk mail is an art of itself. Um, don't ever try and navigate that yourself. They constantly change the labels, where they need to be, how they need to be there, print this to the left, print this to the right. They would send me packing more times than not. My, uh, my wife actually goes there and has been able to sweet talk them and get several pieces of mail out that probably aren't compliant. And then one of the final requirements is get the electronic newsletter out um, monthly as far as that's concerned. So that is the... Um, Second core responsibility uh, for the RP1, team leader daily call sheets for the power hour. Again, we went through the realtor responsibilities of all the obligations I'm required to do. The only way those tasks can all get completed within uh, a reasonable timeline is if I'm prepped. We get, I, I get a daily uh, top 25 list, call list of the people. I can make these calls. I get to my appointments 15 minutes early. I can make these calls um, prior to going into the appointment. Uh, and jot down the notes and get updated in the database so we have a continuity of conversation when we pick up the phone uh, and, and, and update that, uh, hey, Jen, I heard that, uh, you know, Brian started school last week and wanted to see how he liked it at, at college or he liked his roommate. You know, you can build from these conversations through forward dialogue and other skill sets. Um, the RP1 is required to handle, um, is required to handle the, um, birthday program, uh, where we need to where we need to send the information, um, where we need to be that week, uh, pick up the cupcakes so they can be ready to be delivered. Uh, they're also required to have 12 thank you notes stamped and addressed ready for me to add a personal note. Uh, we send 12 of these out every week. Um, I need to have the CMAs and the showing reports ready on my Tuesday call days. I need to have the call list on my letter of the week. Um, I'm a, not only a coach, but a student at the core. Therefore, I have homework requirements that have to be submitted uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, so the, uh, the RP1s actually pull my leads from an Excel lead tracker that we use into the lead tracker forms for the core. They prepare my QuickBook reports uh, to be incorporated into the personal budget, profit and loss, uh, and they pull the production reports to put into the core uh, pay log as far as that's concerned. Um, Thursday being my business day, they have my business people uh, contact and call list, my appointment schedules as far as that's concerned. And then Friday being my builder day, they let me know what site locations I need to be at. We almost need to function in, in, in almost a, a, a blind type of format that they just kind of guide you. Where do I go next? Who do I call next? What do I do? Um, I, I just, you know, because there's so many interruptions that we have throughout the course of the day. 15 minutes before this call. I just had somebody roll in from a geographic farm that we're on um, to come in and uh, needed to discuss something I met with. Um, Jen, my personal assistant, um, had to have the, this webinar set up and run for me so that I can just roll in and, and share the information. So, um, you know, they, they are, are, are almost solely responsible for our success. Uh, as far as that's concerned. And one of the third steps in managing uh, my database and top 50 birthday programs is that they schedule our monthly uh, happy hours, our client parties, and birthday gifts. Um, so those are two of her top responsibilities. 
Now the third and final responsibility is, is actually where most realtors stop. And this is actually the transactional side, managing the listings and buyer checklist, executing listing and sale plans, completing all contracts to close, uh, renewing our domains, our CRS memberships, our you know, subscriptions for the different uh, associations we're involved with, um, research and different cost-effective measures to grow the team, uh, and, and any uh, additional stuff. The average realtor that has an assistant stops right about there. They, they, ha they have these people just do the transactional side. And as you can see, the majority of my day and the majority of our RP1 is spent setting, up, setting us up for success uh, with the prospecting. Now, the top three measurements to make sure that RP1 is in check is that we're closing seven transactions per month, that we're closing one current client referral per, per deal. Um, that um, that's the easiest way to double your business for free is to gain one current client referral during the transaction. Um, and that the team leader only deals with one hour of emails or issues per day. That allows us to function on our highest um, dollar per hour activity as far as that's concerned. Um, so those are the top three responsibilities and measurements for our RP1s. RP2, buyer agent, um, or buyer specialist, if you will. Uh, they're typically compensated on a 50-50 split. They handle all inquiries. They take all the buyer calls and set the appointments. They do the buyer consultation. They show the property and write the contracts. They oversee the contingencies. And what I mean by that is they're not actually involved in uh, work in the contingencies, that's handled by the RP1 transaction manager, but obviously they want to be dialed in and in touch with those and then communi communicating those to the clients for the updates and daily updates um, on our Tuesday update days. Uh, and then they attend celebration or settlement. So those are the five core responsibilities of handling the, uh, the leads and listings of an RP1 or RP2 buyer specialist. Um, if they're light on leads or business transactions, and they're responsible for open houses. They also need to mail and call to their personal database. Uh, we do that through another core form we call the Greatness Tracker. Um, and they work a set schedule. Uh, they have a printed daily schedule. Um, they attend daily team meetings so that they're in sync with, with where we need to be. If we're low on current client referrals or business people transactions, um, they see that. So we run a very balanced business. The top three measurements is that the average RP2 best, best case scenarios, will close three transactions per month. Uh, they, too, are charged with the task of receiving one current client referral per settlement. Again, the easiest way to double our business for free. And thirdly, is that 90% of all client surveys rate them at an eight or higher. So those are the core responsibilities and measurements for our RP2 buyer specialist. This is kind of what we do. They're an extension and a branch of, of what you do and how you do it. Um, an RP2, as you evolve and grow your team, uh, you, you eventually evolve to an RP2 seller specialist, um, which is what I have as well. But the top five responsibilities for the RP2 seller specialist is that she's to take the seller calls and set the appointments. She goes out and does the pre-listing and marketing appointments. She does the CMA and lists the property. She presents the contract and oversees the contingency removal. Again, the RP1 handles those tasks. She's just responsible for communicating the progress to our clients, and she attends celebration. Um, now, at the core, we talk about a concept or teach a concept called Dr. Nurse. Uh, I go out on any transactions that are netting a commission of 75, 7,500 7, or better, I'll go out and I'll do a marketing presentation with the RP2 seller specialist. We'll complete the presentation, set the price, and then I turn it over to the RP2 who runs with it from there um, to transition the seller-client relationship to the RP2 more as a real estate partner rather than an assistant. Um, and, and simply stated, uh, they're better at dotting the I's and crossing the T's than me. So we hand that, that task over. Uh, the RP2 is responsible to maintain a minimum of 30 listings at all times. Um, 
And any updates as far as that's concerned. Our top three measurements for the RP2 cell specialist is to close a minimum of five transactions per month, be selected 95% of the time. And the reason that is so high is, is we are rarely in competition. We're marketing, we're networking. As you can see, we're prospecting so much that we're, we're typically referred in from at least one source if not multiple sources. So it makes our job much easier when you're not in there defending your fee and, and, and trying to get hired. You can get right down to business and talk about what's most important to the consumer and the client uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, and then our final measurement for the RP2 sell specialist is that they sell the property for a minimum of 97% of the value that we provided them within 88 days. And 88 days is the is our average board um, time on the market right now. We've got a very low inventory uh, as far as that's concerned. So as that changes, we'll, we'll adjust that timeline. But you know, at meetings we're discussing that as well. So not a lot of rocket science for the RP2s are really extensions of us. But you can see with the support and the structure around them, they're set up for success. The ultimate uh, evolution is to get yourself built up to a dialer or uh, an intern. And uh, again, this is, uh, this is what Rick, the owner of the Corps, calls gumble in the shoe. Uh, it is just a, 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 an entry-level position. Um, it's kind of paying your dues, if you will. Uh, we've all sacrificed many late nights and late hours and uh, personal events to tend to our clients, so everybody kind of needs to pay their dues. A uh, dialer and intern is, is simply charged with the responsibility of, of contacting 20 people a day 100 people a week. And when I say contact, I mean actually speak to. They might call 30, 40, or 50 people to literally speak to 20. Um, but that's, that's their responsibility to talk to 20 people a day, 100 people a week. And they're talking about us. They're sharing our name. They're calling our database. They're doing some of the letter of the week calls. They're calling our current clients. They're calling referral partners. Um, they, they're calling um, people that came from our, our speed dating at, at the Chamber of Commerce, um, different people that we're meeting. They're setting our appointments. As the team grows, um, you need to pull additional responsibilities away from the RP1 so they have better success. So um, they'll, they'll call these people throughout the course of the week. They're setting appointments, um, and they're learning to be a realtor. They're asking questions to the team leader. They're responsible to read a a different real estate book a month, and they need to take their real estate license within six months. Now, they're not talking to real estate. I know many state laws prohibit uh, unlicensed people from, from engaging in that type of behavior. We're talking about someone just setting appointments. And the reason this particular role is so important is that if you learn to master the prospecting muscle in the beginning, you will set yourself up for success. Um, we had one of the top producing core students uh, in, in core history was a life insurance agent. And all they did was pound the phone Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, setting up appointments for Thursday and Friday. They went out all day Thursday and Friday selling policies, and they came back Friday afternoon and shared who sold the most policies. Um, he decided that was no longer a fit for him. He jumped into the mortgage business and took that same muscle of setting appointments and prospecting and quickly became a seven-figure earner. Uh, he's one of the best in our best in our business and one of our current coaches today, Josh Sigmund. Um, top three measures for our uh, dialers is that they are setting a minimum of three appointments a day, a minimum of a, a break bread, which is a lunch, coffee, happy hour, um, and that they're filling their monthly happy hours. So that is the monthly, um, or that is the top three measurements for a dialer, for our intern, something that will evolve to over time. Um, three biggest mistakes the average realtor makes in growing teams. Um, lack of knowledge. They just don't know who to hire, what, when, where, and how of each position. Well, we've talked about where we find these people. You know, they're typically in our database. We've talked about their personality types. Um, we talked about the different personality types of, of which person to sit on the right seat of the bus. 
Um, we've talked about where we find them in our communities, whether we need to pull them out of our sphere, pull them out of the real estate community, um, or actually go hire traditional methods of, of Craigslist and Monster.coms. Um, and then at what point do we hire them? We talked about, you know, uh, you need to have a minimum two and a half transactions a month to um, to bring in an RP1 to be able to compensate them. You don't want to be giving away the money you need to feed the family. However, once you can once you can maintain two and a half transactions per month, you certainly want to get up to um, a personal assistant, which will easily help you double double your production almost instantly, uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, and then an RP2 again just continues the to evolve. Uh, as you grow, you'll bring in additional RP1s and dialers, which just keep the pipeline full. So that I didn't necessarily start off to grow a team. That was not my desire or my plan. I actually sold a company because I was tired of hiring people and managing them. Uh, ultimately, because I learned I just didn't do a good job at that. So I've learned skills called at the core. Um, but then I did such a great job taking care of my clients. They were referring me so many people. I had. I had to grow. I, I had to grow uh, just in order to continue to provide the same level of service that I wanted to continue to provide. So this is kind of the journey of, of what I've evolved to um, and how I've grown. Um, the second, second mistake, I think, is not hiring A players. Too often, I think the real estate community looks for somebody who will fog a mirror um, or they gravitate to somebody who's just like them. We're not looking for somebody who's just like us because they don't necessarily complement what we need. We need somebody to complement our weaknesses. We need somebody that are, have different personality traits, different strengths, um, someone that can backfill and keep us propped up as far as that's concerned. Um, so the other part of hiring A players is making sure they have the right personality types. You know, if somebody is a strong C, more of, a, more of a, an analytical person, an engineer, an architect, they're not going to be a great RP2. And you really just set them up for failure and set yourself up for failure. So hiring the right people is making sure they have the right personality types for the position. And then not leading the team properly is the third most common mistake. It's not a matter of just farming out the leads and, and, and keeping your fingers crossed and hoping you get some form of a commission split for them. Um, you need to manage the team um, through daily checklists, through communication logs, through daily meetings. Um, through um, accountability, greatness trackers, you know, commitments and requirements. Are they meeting the goals? Do they maintain a certain closing ratio? Uh, do the clients like them? Are the clients referring them? So managing the team is an ongoing process, and leading the team is setting the vision in a totally different skill set of the, just managing a team. So we need to be able to have the proper provisions in place to continue to take care of the team as far as that's concerned. Um, One of the um, results matter. You know, so often we talk about um, <clears throat> different strategies, different thought processes. Um, there's a different seminar, a different webinar, a different conference call every week about how to grow your business. And unfortunately, so many of the other real estate organizations out there, in my opinion, teach theoretical. It's not practical. They're not on the streets. They don't know what we're dealing with on a daily basis. So they can't really have the success and the results that we have. As you evolve up the ladder, this call has been hosted today for level one prospects, anyone who's interested in, in, in learning to take the next step. There's different evolutions in the core process. Level two is annual summits, and level three is coaching students. Here's the results of our most recent graduating class. Our coaching students sign up for a two-year commitment. They have to qualify uh, to be able to uh, be hired. Um, and our average student from graduating this November 2012, um, their average cash net worth went up 206% in the last two years. Now, you all know the last two years have not been an easy time. They started with an annual cash net worth of $162,376 in January of 2011. Their goal 
was to save 283,000 or increase their cash net worth up to 283,000 and their actual cash net worth as of November and still having two more months to go was up to $335,818. Their income in that same period went up 304%. They started with an average income of $159,062 in January 2011 with a goal of getting their income almost doubled up to $296,842. And their average result, again, only as of November, was the average core student, and we're currently coaching about 160 students, the average student's increased income up to $484,219. Um, so it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, you, you just can't challenge your results as far as that's concerned. It is, it is by and away one of the finest organizations I've ever been associated with. Um, what you get um, benefits of the core. You can literally double, triple, quadruple, <laughs> and double. Um, our, high, our highest students this year will break $3 million in gross commissions in one year. And what happens is you, as you gain traction, as you become more dominant in your marketplace, um, the law of attraction, people start to see, hey, what's he doing? How, what's he doing different? How is that working? And you attract better people to your team. So you're no longer out fishing and chasing. You're actually picking the best of the crop. Um, you know, Jack Walsh, one of the best CEOs, talks about top grading. Dumping the bottom 10% of your team each and every year. Uh, as you grow your organization, you're going to be able to uh, continue to grow from some of the best uh, best people in the marketplace. So that's just kind of a secondary benefit of having a great practice and a, and a great life. Um, you know, we're here to accumulate wealth and improve the planet. The level one coaching, um, what is included in the level one coaching is you get uh, two CDs or podcasts per month. Uh, you can download these into your iTunes. Uh, we talk about everything that we're experiencing out there in the real estate community from a coaches and real estate team leaders perspective. We're talking about time management, listing skills, dialogue, how to build the team, different lead generation. There's currently over 100 hours of online training sessions out there. You're able to attend a real-time monthly online coaching call hosted by a diff, different real estate coach each month. Um, again, talking about real-time issues that we're all dealing with. Uh, at the level one, you are offered a limited access to our concierge services, um, but you will be entitled to some forms, um, some seminars, some budgeting information, things that we have to, to, to run your business smoother and actually grow it. And the topics are just everything that you and I are dealing with all day long, building great teams, generating 50 leads per, per month for realtors, um, you know, extreme leads. We do extreme leads classes where we're generating 1,200 leads a year. Uh, and many of our classes, and we have, you know, host an annual summit twice a year, many of our classes that some of the highest income earners in the country uh, attend are taped and available to you. So what I would encourage you to do is not be a typical realtor. Take three or four pages of notes. Promise yourself all these things you're going to get implemented. I would encourage you to stop, pick up the phone, and actually call Courtney at the core or Travis, and you can email either one. You can pick up the phone and actually call Courtney, 1-800-660-6670, extension 207. Do yourself a favor. Do it today. Do it as soon as this call is over. Uh, <laughs> buy the whole year and actually write it off on this year's taxes. So give yourself the gift of that. Um, I want to be respectful of your time. I, I appreciate anyone that is actually sacrificing their time to continue to be a better student. I've been a student of my craft since day one, um, and I'm continuing to evolve and learn. We've got about 10 minutes left, so I'm going to open it up for any questions you guys may have. Um, I've got a couple questions that have come in now that I'm going to actually be able to handle for the last 10 minutes of the call. Um, someone had asked if the 50-50 commission split with your RP2 is off of your commission split or with your company. Um, that's going to that's gonna depend on how your company is structured 
if it's a traditional brokerage, then it's going to be off of uh, off the splits you negotiate with your brokerage. If it's a hundred percent split, if you're a hundred percent shop, uh, which is what I operate, then um, I get a hundred percent of my commission, and um, it it's off of my commission split. Um, should we be on the seller specialist side? No. Um, Seller, uh, other compensation, I've had uh, good luck uh, tracking some of the best in the business on salaried agents. Um, I think it is a excellent balance to attract some of the best people in the marketplace that do not want the peaks and valley of uh, income up and down or continue the risk of 100% commissions, uh, even on a team, even though you're feeding with a lot better leads. I've had a lot better law of attraction with offering a salary position with a small bonus. Um, that way, at the end of the month, if we're struggling, everybody's looking at the paychecks and figuring out what we need to do to succeed. We have a great month. Everybody celebrates together. But it allows them to be the best at what they do because they're not worried. They're not stressed. If a couple deals roll over. Um, and, and when you have control of your business and your numbers, you have that flexibility uh, to be able to forecast and know what you can afford to pay. Uh, and again, I think it ends up being a win-win as far as that's concerned. Um, somebody asked about recovering the top three measuring points of an RP1 dialer. Um, I'll put that slide back up so you actually can see that. Um, oops. So a dialer intern, as far as that's concerned, top three measurements for them is they are required to schedule a minimum, that they, they're, they're required to make contact with a minimum of 20 people a day or 100 people a week. You can average that out. They might have better days at the beginning of the week and lighter call schedule at the end of the week. So that you want them touching at least 20 people a day or a minimum of 100 people a week. You want them setting at least four appointments a day, three face-to-face, be a listing appointment, a showing appointment, a buyer consultation, a listing consultation, a referral partner meeting, a builder drop by, a uh, business uh, opportunity with a uh, CPA, with a financial planner, with a divorce attorney, with an estate attorney. We're doing a lot of business these days with bankruptcy attorneys. So there's a lot of different opportunities for business people out there so that you want them scheduling a uh, minimum of four appointments a day. Again, as a realtor, team leader, you want to be prospecting or in green time four and a half hours per day. And then the final requirement or final measurement for a dialer is to fill one happy hour uh, or lunch and learn per month. And that's either through our top club, our business people, uh, and then you can you can scroll that down or mix it up with some of your current clients as far as that's concerned. Um, Someone else asked about the RP1 job responsibility, so I'm going to roll back to that slide as well. So uh, I, again, RP1 job responsibilities are a, are a varying scale. Um, there is much to do in the success of running your team about prospecting, meaning setting us up for success in regards to <clears throat> um, our call lists, our spheres that we need to be touching, you know, having the information ready for our um, current client calls, showing feedback. You don't need to be fumbling around in CSS, pulling up a showing report, or doing a quick market analysis, and be expected to make all these calls in a day. You need to have the team funnel this information to you so you can make the high dollar calls, the tough calls, uh, leveraging your database, reaching out. Uh, through four dialogues, nurturing the business people relationships, and getting out there trying to expand your business through business people. Um, again, a lot of different opportunities as far as that's concerned. Um, managing your team agendas as far as that's concerned. Um, you know, I don't think what we do is rocket science. I, I think it's more difficult, the balancing act of getting it all done. And the more we have in control of um, an abundance of high dollar per hour activities, the better success that we're going to have uh, as far as that's concerned. So focus on more green time, work a scheduled time. One of the mistakes I made early on 
with my different organizations is I set up my different team meetings, my brokerage meeting, my mortgage company meeting, my team meeting, my commercial builders meetings. I set them all up first thing in the morning because what happens throughout the course of the day? Different things come up. We get distracted. We can't get back to it. Um, and so I always make sure I got my meetings done first thing in the morning. And again, through the aha of the core, I realized my golden time, I'm a morning person anyhow, my golden time is first thing in the morning. What is most important in my practice? Prospecting. So now I have shifted green time to first thing in the morning. I roll in at 8.30. I review um, any emails and things I have waiting for me from the day before. I have a brief team meeting, and I jump right into my green time and prospecting um, for about two hours. I do lunch meeting, and then I come back immediately after lunch. I do any company meetings I have with brokerage, real estate school, um, commercial investments, different things that I have to deal with. I do those from, from 1 o'clock till 2, um, knock that out, and then right back to close the day on green time and prospecting. Um, and dealing with any issues, emails, or uh, issues I have in between that timeline. So uh, I think you have better success when you set yourself up by time blocking as far as that's concerned um, and schedule appointments within that. You know, it's interesting when, when clients say, oh, you know, you're going to have to come out after work, 7 o'clock. People will leave work early to go get a cavity filled, but they won't leave work to meet with a professional who's going to be dealing with the typically the average person's sole most important financial investment that they have, you know, it, it's just, it just defies logic. So we need to manage our business like the professionals that we are and uh, have great success doing it. Uh, I, I'm just frustrated in our business that way too many of us work way too hard. And again, um, we're, we're one, one deal or one, one hiccup away uh, from being out of business. And I just don't think it should be that way. I think we all owe it to ourselves and our family and certainly our clients to have balance uh, in our life and have very successful careers. So again, I want to be honorable and respect our time. I know you guys are very busy, very busy people. Uh, I'm honored that you actually uh, came out and met with us on the core. I would encourage you to, um, again, immediately following this call, stop, get enrolled in the system. Uh, it is far and away one of the best organizations I've ever been involved with. Uh, you're going to be dealing with real-time information, stuff that you can implement today that we're all doing. So have a great day, call the core, and make it a great year.